day one of the Annapurna circuit. So we got a bus, a uh, dodgy old Ratley bus at 6.30 this morning in the middle of the night to um, Behishar from Pokhara to Behishar and it was pretty rough. Stopped there, transferred onto another smaller bus, a local bus for another um, ooh, hour and a half or something. Ended up in the little town of Nadi where we had some momos and um, some fried rice. And now we're walking We've actually started physically walking to the next town, Bahandunda, I think, where we might stay the night. It's like 3 34 in the afternoon, something like that. But we have officially started the Annapurna circuit. Hey, Billy. And these are rice paddies. And they've just been harvesting all the rice from what we've seen. We run a bus with sacks and sacks full of it. Pretty cool. <laughs> this is our first morning on the Annapurna. Yesterday was just a travel day off and here we are. It's uh, just a nice simple little homestay. And today we head off up the hill properly into the Annapurna circuit. homestay we uh, stayed at last night. It was really nice, nice guy. Everything was organic, no pesticides and uh, property was surrounded by rice fields, rice paddies. And the uh, owner was saying they grow like four or five different types of rice, like white rice, brown rice, black rice and uh, also red rice. But the red rice they only use once a year for a particular festival. They mix it with um, sugar and milk, make some sort of a porridgey type thing once a year. He said that his little paddock, they grow uh, about two tons of rice every year, 2,000 kilos. And um, that's just enough for his family. Each year they run out at the end of the end of the year. So that's how much they go through, two tons of rice. There's only like three or four of them in the family and a few tourists. So yeah, pretty amazing. They also keep goats. So they had three or four goats and they were fattening them up for this festival coming up and they'll sell them live, but they'll get for the festival. Yeah, pretty cool. Not the killing of goats, but just the whole subsistence living thing. It's quite nice. Okay, uh, first day of trekking Annapurna. It's about nine o'clock in the morning. It's, it's lush and uh, almost quite tropical. You can hear cicadas, lots of rice paddies. It's so different to uh, Lantang where we were. But I guess we're still down low. We haven't got up above the tree line, not for another couple of days yet. But yeah, it's so sticky, moist. A little bit of a waterfall. Hello, buffalo. Hello, buffalo. This is an original part of the Annapurna circuit, right? It's a narrow sort of goat track. These days a lot of people just seem to walk on the road, but uh, yeah, this is the original trail, it's beautiful. We just had a bit of a schnackety schnack, some uh, potato momos at a little um, roadside stall in Chumse, I think it's called. But we're now work walking on another two and a half hours to a little town called Tal, but it's uh, quite elevated. We're going to go across a swing bridge and then climb for an hour and a half. I don't know, 500 meters or something. It's really tropical, it's really muggy and shorts and t-shirt, just sweaty and Looking forward to a hot shower, really, or a bucket bath at least.
we're back onto the original Annapurna circuit now. Working our way up to a little town called Tal. Uh, today, probably half of our walking would have been on roads. The other half would be back on the original track like this, the Annapurna circuit. And uh, yeah, this is lovely. Must have been so different 20 years ago before the road was uh, put in. There's marijuana growing along the side of the track. It's not particularly healthy, but it's, yeah, seedy heads. If you were that way inclined, there's, yeah, a bit of dope growing on the track. Day two or day three of walking Annapurna Circuit. Chum Tse is the little town we're at. Uh, they've got a little smoking incense pot in the back there. All the locals seem to do it every morning. They come out and they put their incense out. It's a little charming little village. Had a really good room. Comfortable, dry, warm, hot shower. Doggos. Anyway, heading off today, Chame, which is another town up the valley there. And we just sort of first few hints of snow-capped mountains, but my camera won't pick it up. First little uh, river crossing for the day, Bamboo Bridge. There's no steel in it, only the cable on each side, but the rest is all bamboo and timber. Hello goats. The roads here are pretty amazing, they're just carved out of the side of the cliff basically. See the overhang? And the river's rushing away down below us there. But it's basically road walking because the trail on the other side of the river got shut off by an avalanche sometime in the past and they haven't repaired it. So we're having to do a couple of hours of road walking. Not ideal but it's really pretty still. They've got their firewood stacked up so neatly for the winter. chickens bark, bark, bark. and some wood that they've cut this is nice hopping off the road for a little while been doing a lot of road walking today spits of rain a little bit average I had lunch a while back still got a couple of hours walking to Chame which is the next town little town of uh, Chame where um, we stayed last night it's got these nice little cottages uh, it's quite sort of alpine, uh, the feel of the place. But yeah, we just had our breakfast and now we're going to head off um, shortly to Upper Pisang or Lower Pisang. It's about 15 kilometres, but my maps are saying it's 24 hours of walking time. And it can't be right, there's something going on with my maps. <clears throat> I don't know why, like, it's the, the best quality free maps that money can buy. I'm not paying for maps. So we had about four hours of walking, five, no, four hours of walking, yeah, from Chame to this place, which is Lower Pisang. And uh, yeah, the guest house is called Bob Marley Guest House. It's pretty cool. Uh, got a free room, provided we buy our, um, our dinner and breakfast, which is not an issue. Nice place. 
uh, across the other side of the valley there is Upper Pisang. And tomorrow we've got to walk another four or five hours all the way to um, Manang. And we're sort of hoping that there's some shops there because we really need some more clothes. This afternoon when we arrived, uh, Robin and I put on all of our clothes pretty much, including our puffer jackets that you see me wearing now, and then climbed into bed underneath two dunas. And uh, we were still cold after about an hour. So, yeah, it's cold. But uh, I don't know if you can see in the background, there's snow-covered mountains. Yeah. That's why it's cold. <laughs> I can't think why they call this place Bob Marley Guesthouse.